Since 9-11, Major Nadal Hassan wanted out of the army. And in early 2009, according to investigators, he started plotting a violent escape. On his computers inside his Colleen, Texas apartment, officials found Hassan was researching terrorist killings, how to plot jihadist attacks, and other extremist literature. Three months before the killing, the radicalized army psychiatrist started buying his weapons and ammunition from this gun store. And on the morning of November 5th, 2009, Hassan started the day at 6 a.m. with morning prayers at this mosque. Hassan's behavior that morning was strange. Witnesses say he insisted on leading the morning Muslim call to prayer, even though someone else had already been called on to do it. And at the end, he said goodbye to his fellow worshipers and told them he was going home. And as he started walking out, he shook hands with a friend and told him he was going on a journey. At 6.30 in the morning, Hassan walked into this convenience store, a routine visit to buy coffee and hash browns. The store owner said he looked cool and calm, but Hassan, who had recently learned he would be deployed to the Afghanistan war zone, was about to make sure that didn't happen. Later that morning, Hassan returned home to this apartment complex and started shredding personal documents. Hassan then dressed himself in his U.S. Army fatigues, packed up his weapons and more than 400 rounds of ammunition, and then made the short drive to Fort Hood. It was just after 1 o'clock when Nadal Hassan walked into the Soldier Readiness Processing Center. What nobody knew is that Hassan had the handgun with laser-sighted mounts in his pocket and 16 magazines. He stuffed paper towels in his pocket so other soldiers couldn't hear the metallic magazines clank together. Hassan walked into a room filled with soldiers getting final medical approvals, preparing for deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq. According to court testimony, Hassan sat down in a chair, placed both hands on his knees and stared at the ground for a moment. Then he stood up, yelled Allah Akbar and started firing. I really thought it was a training exercise where, you know, it had smokes in the air and gunshots going off, but it'll be over in a minute. But then when I started seeing all the, uh, uh, the blood and the, the, the people running around, I realized that it was not... The smell of gunpowder, smoke, and blood filled the room. Hassan reloaded magazines quickly, firing nearly 150 shots. Hassan targeted unarmed, uniformed soldiers and tried to avoid civilians. Red and green colored laser lights from Hassan's gun flashed across the room. One soldier described it like a laser light show. Some soldiers were killed instantly, left sitting in their chairs. Others scrambled for cover behind cubicles and doorways and under desks, wherever they could. Michael Cahill, the only civilian killed in the massacre, charged from behind a cubicle, throwing a chair at Hassan, but it wasn't enough. Hassan shot and killed Cahill on the spot. Hassan continued. It was chaotic. Soldiers huddled in corners. Some played dead on the ground, all waiting to figure out how to escape from the room. Hassan walked out of the back door and kept shooting at soldiers trying to escape. A police officer finally fired the shot that dropped Hassan leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. The savage attack had been stopped, but the horror of what happened still haunts the victims today. Ed Lavendera, CNN, Fort Hood, Texas.